Every current DSLR and compact system camera, and also many compacts, give you the opportunity to store the images you capture in either RAW or JPEG format. JPEG is the default option and the one you're probably already used to, giving you images you can publish online or print straight away. RAW files are a little different, in that the camera has done part of the work, but you need to essentially finish off the processing yourself. It's similar to a negative from a roll of film, in that the bones of the image are there, but you still have control over exactly how you create the image from it. Instead of deciding things like colour, white balance, noise reduction and sharpening at the time of capture, you can tweak these things with greater control on a computer later on. RAW files contain more data than JPEGs and they're designed to be malleable. They're stored in either 12 or 14-bit format, compared to the 8-bit format that's standard for JPEGs. This means there's more scope for greater colour information in RAW images. Like JPEGs, RAW files are typically compressed in camera, although the process is different for the two. JPEGs are usually compressed by a system known as lossy compression, which means some information is discarded and guessed using the value of neighbouring pixels. With RAW files, you may have the option of saving images with a higher quality lossless compression system, which means the information within the file is reorganised for greater efficiency without image details actually being lost. This creates higher quality images, but at the expense of file size. With RAW files, you can typically regain details from highlights, brighten shadows and make colour corrections, viewing the results in real time and adjusting other processing options as you do this to make sure the image stays fine. Not only that, but because any edits you make to a RAW file are saved alongside it rather than as part of it, you can revisit a RAW file as many times as you like and not worry about the original file losing its quality. The exact level of control you have over your RAW file depends on the software you use to process it. You can use an industry standard program such as Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom, the software that comes with your camera or something else, but all should offer some form of control over exposure, white balance, noise reduction and sharpening. Some programs will even automatically know the characteristics of the lens you use to capture your image and can correct aberrations such as vignetting, distortion and chromatic aberration. You don't even need to use a computer to process these, as many of today's cameras offer raw processing as standard. You typically won't have the same level of control as you would on a computer, but it's useful if you want to quickly process and save a number of different versions of the same image. Once you're done editing, you can save your raw files as lossless TIFF images for excellent image quality, or as JPEGs when size and compatibility with different display devices is a priority. You should hang on to your RAW files though, as you may want to process them again in future using a different program. It's worth bearing in mind that you don't always need to shoot RAW images, as many cameras today are more than capable of processing JPEGs well. The safest option is to shoot RAW and JPEG images at the same time, so that you can use the JPEG file if you're happy with it, and process the RAW file if you're not. For more tips and advice, subscribe to our channel, visit us on Twitter, Facebook or Google+, or check out wexphotographic.com forward slash blog.